The single most common refrain you've heard from conservative politicians for generations since Eisenhower is that the news media has a left-wing bias. Long before Donald Trump went after fake news, Richard Nixon was telling his aides not to talk to the New York Times and the Washington Post. Newt Gingrich insisted that he didn't read letters to the editor in newspapers because the editors were all leftists. Bob Dole ignored questions about his views on tobacco because he didn't care what the, quote, liberal media thought. Republicans have disparaged the media for so long um, because the media deserves it. The vast majority of news outlets in this country are corrupt and partisan, and everybody knows it on both ends of the political spectrum. So it's an easy target to hit over and over and over and over again. The problem with this approach isn't that it's wrong. I mean, it's, it's correct. They're right about what they're saying about the news media. The problem is that it doesn't go nearly far enough. It doesn't come close to addressing the extent of the bias, the ideological capture in American media. Yes, corporate news media is propaganda from the New York Times to NBC to CNN and the Washington Post and so on. We know that. But the news media is just part of a much, much larger issue. What conservatives almost never talked about for decades is that this bias also exists in other forms of media where it is, in fact, much more insidious and harmful, and most notably in children's programming. You know, that's a, that's a much bigger deal than bias in mainstream news coverage for reasons that should be obvious. Adults who are the primary audience for news coverage have uh, more mature brains than children, at least some of us do. They're generally capable of recognizing propaganda when they see it, or they should be capable of it anyway. But children, for the most part, don't have that ability. If Nickelodeon bombards them with non-binary characters, and if Disney hits them with a not-so-secret gay agenda, which they've admitted is their goal— then kids are totally vulnerable to it. They're helpless. And also on top of that, entertainment, as opposed to uh, news media, burrows deeper into the human soul and psyche. It can shape you in ways that a CNN news segment simply cannot, much to CNN's chagrin. Conservative politicians and other thought leaders somehow uh, rarely seem to notice this problem for a long time. With very few exceptions, they uh, didn't say much about it. But parents all over the country have been aware of what's going on for a while. And that became uh, especially clear to me a couple of weeks ago when I decided to do a monologue opening the show um, uh, about uh, LGBT propaganda in the show Paw Patrol, which is one of the most popular television shows for children. And I went into some detail about Paw, Paw Patrol's newest writer, who is this creepy activist who makes sing-songy videos for kids about abortion and transgenderism. And, you know, often in the past when I have led the show with a topic like that, instead of, say, the war in Ukraine or now the war in Israel or the 50th Trump indictment or whatever, um, typically there's, there's been some backlash. You can, you can usually count on a few people or more than a few to say that it's a silly topic and that grown men shouldn't pay attention to children's shows anyway. And, of course, the left always says that because they don't want you talking about what they're doing to children. They recognize how important it is. They pretend that they don't because they don't want you to notice. But historically, this has been the response from the right as well. There have always been you know, a decent number of conservatives who just don't want to hear about any topic that isn't a headline on cable news. Um, and meanwhile, their children, their own children, are being shaped and changed and transformed in front of them under their nose uh, while they're only paying attention to whatever Fox News is talking about. Now, this time, though, the reaction was very different from the norm. I'm, I'm not going to go through all the comments that listeners and readers left about that monologue. You can read them yourself, if you like, on the Daily Wire website. But the consensus was pretty much unanimous. People are completely fed up with the endless stream of propaganda that corporate media is directing at their children in the form of these kids' shows. It's not just Paw Patrol. I mean, it's everywhere. It's everything. There were hundreds of comments along these lines. And, and um, many of them specified specific shows that have begun shoehorning left-wing agenda items into their plot lines. A lot of shows that I've never heard of, because as I've said before, uh, the vast majority of children's programming has just been ruled out completely in my house, either because it is, it is left-wing garbage or because it's just garbage, period. It's terrible quality, and it'll make my kids dumber, and I don't want them watching it. Or oftentimes, it's a combination of the two. And this is a problem that affects all children's programming these days, or almost all of it. But no titan of children's entertainment has fallen in the public eye quite like the Walt Disney Company. For generations, Disney made creative content for children that mirrored the values of their parents and their country. They weren't making these tepid, lifeless, politically correct live-action remakes. They were coming out with um, 
beautifully animated films, timeless stories like Snow White, The Lion King, Peter Pan. But in recent years, Disney's objectives have changed, and this is just not the same company that existed in the 20th century, not even close. Things are now so bad that Disney recently signed an agreement to create propaganda films for China's Ministry of Culture, which is a good fit, we have to admit. A radically left-wing company making propaganda for a communist government that is a match made in hell. Meanwhile, in this country, without even attempting to hide what they're doing, Disney has begun, a, a, and long ago began, a top-down effort to indoctrinate children into left-wing ideologies, especially gender ideology, which invariably involves the sexualization of children. This is now what Disney stands for at every level. Last year, as you may remember, the journalist Chris Ruffo published uh, footage of, uh, of uh, Disney meetings and what they were talking about behind the scenes, and they were very open about this agenda. Here's one clip, if you didn't see it, of Disney corporate president Carrie Burke speaking in, a, in this virtual meeting with her colleagues. And uh, it's disturbing, but it shows just how ingrained this ideology is at uh, Disney. Watch. I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually, um, uh, one transgender child um, um, and one pansexual child, um, and, and also as a leader. Um, and that was the thing that really got me because I have heard so much from so many of my colleagues over the course of the last couple of weeks um, in open forums and through emails and phone conversations. And um, I feel a responsibility to speak um, not just for myself, but for them, um, to all of us. We, we had a we had an open forum last week at 20th where. Um, again, the home of, of really incredible groundbreaking LGBTQIA stories over the years where um, one of our execs stood up and said, you know, we only have a handful of queer leads in our content. And I went, what? I, that can't be true. And I and I and I realized, oh, it, it actually is true. We have many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories and and, and yet we don't have enough leads. We don't have enough. It's never enough. You know, nothing is ever gay enough for these people. Especially this woman who claimed to have one child who is, quote, pansexual, and another who identifies as, quote, unquote, transgender. And if you have any basic understanding of statistics, you know exactly what that means. I mean, there's just no way that uh, one parent ends up with two kids who both just happen to identify this way. Uh, what it means is this woman is foisting gender ideology on her own children, and she's proud of it. She's happy that she programmed her kids this way, and now uh, she wants to program yours as well. That woman is not alone at Disney, as you might imagine. Another video obtained by Rufo, a Disney executive producer, explained that she has a not-at-all-secret gay agenda and regularly works on adding queerness to children's programming. And that's an infamous enough clip that we don't need to play it. You've probably seen it by now. But it is, uh, it's infamous for a reason. And there are many more like it. Though in truth, you don't need to listen in on Disney staff meetings to see what the company is doing. You just watch their content. The left-wing activists at GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, have been doing that. And they've taken notice of Disney's activism. They just praise Disney for adding, quote, LGBTQ content into more than 40% of their productions last year. So this is overt LGBT indoctrination, even according to GLAAD, in 40% of the children's shows, just in one year. And that beat out every other company except, uh, except Netflix. Netflix is still gayer than Disney. Just by a hair, though. You know, we do things very differently here at The Daily Wire. We host several of the top news podcasts in the world. We launched a chocolate company overnight. We just took Disney head-on by releasing 100 episodes of kids' content. It takes very specific people with very specific skills to make The Daily Wire what it is. How do we find and hire these people? Well, we do that with ZipRecruiter. That's how. ZipRecruiter makes your whole hiring process faster and easier. Their powerful technology works for you. To identify people whose skills and experience match your job, ZipRecruiter saves you time by letting you easily invite your top candidates to apply to your job so they're more likely to apply sooner. ZipRecruiter is trusted by millions. In fact, over 3.8 million business, businesses have come to ZipRecruiter uh, for their hiring needs. Make a positive impact on your hiring future with ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh to try ZipRecruiter for free. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash W-A-L-S-H. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. It's important to note here that Disney, they're not simply trying to 
uh, sexualize kids and hit them with LGBT propaganda, uh, which is bad enough on its own, obviously. They're also trying to instill in them all of the values of the modern left to make them as insufferable and entitled as possible. To that end, Disney hired a truly obnoxious woman to play Snow White in this upcoming uh, feminist adaptation of the classic film. I uh, showed you some of her footage before. It's hard to watch, so I'll spare you that as well. Parents in this country see all this happening. Uh, they don't need it explained to them anymore. As Disney's perverse agenda has taken hold, a lot of these parents have uh, been giving up on the whole brand. Last year, Disney posted its worst stock return in 48 years, losing nearly half its value. According to some analysts, Disney's attacks on conservative values have cost them roughly a billion dollars when you consider some of their recent box office returns when they've just been putting out flop after flop after flop. flop. Now, to be clear, uh, these numbers aren't simply a reflection of the poor quality of Disney's latest productions, although it's certainly that as well. Parents understand what Disney stands for, and it's, it's, a, it's an ideology that parents don't want anywhere near their children. There was a brand new survey from Rasmussen Reports recently, which the Daily Wire reported on, uh, which shows that as of late September, more than 60% of GOP voters view Disney unfavorably. More than a third say they view Disney very unfavorably. Now, these are staggering numbers, especially when you consider that, that, that the numbers are somehow even lower than the favorability ratings of Bud Light, which has suffered maybe the single greatest collapse of any brand in modern history. But there is one unique advantage that Disney has enjoyed despite its free fall in popularity, and that's the fact that their brand of indoctrination is everywhere in children's media. I mean, it's just totally ubiquitous. With Bud Light, people could buy a different brand of beer. With kids' content, that has been virtually impossible. Whether you stick with Disney or you go to Nickelodeon or wherever else you go, you're going to encounter the same garbage. And so parents said, well, there's nowhere else. Where else am I? There are no other options. And that is all why a little over a year ago, the Daily Wire announced our plans to invest a minimum of $100 million over the next three years into a line of live action and animated children's entertainment. And with that decision, the Daily Wire became the only major media company that has ever decided to do anything about the wholesale, all-encompassing left-wing bias that has now infected every aspect of children's media. Yesterday, we delivered on that promise. On the 100th anniversary of the day Walt Disney founded his company, the Daily Wire launched BentKey, which is a brand new company with its own app. Uh, you can go on your Apple TV, Google Play, Roku, Fire Stick, and download it right now. There's 150 episodes available at the moment. New ones coming out every Saturday morning as we resurrect the uh, Saturday morning cartoon that uh, many of us grew up with. There's even a new live-action Snow White movie coming from BentKey featuring our very own Brett Cooper, which will actually respect and stay faithful to the original fairy tale. And of course, with all due respect to Brett Cooper, the biggest news, I think, is that I make a key cameo appearance in one of our new animated children's shows called Chip Chilla. I play a talking dinosaur toy, um, and this is incredible footage as well. Watch this. Yeah. Detecting nothing of interest on this planet. You got that right, Brontor. No way I will find anything valuable around here. I shall defeat Captain Brontor, for he is weak, and I am less weak. Punch! Punch! What? Oh no! Wow. What a staggering and beautiful performance by me. I only have one line, but I deliver it with such skill and force and artistry that it practically brings you to tears. This is what many people are saying anyway. At least it's what I said when I watched that episode with my kids last night. And uh, I'll be honest that my daughter talked over my line, so I had to rewind it and play it again and say, everyone be quiet for a second. Listen to this and make sure everyone heard it. Uh, nobody in my living room reacted very much or seemed overly impressed with my performance, but that's because they were stunned into silence. I asked if they wanted to go back and watch the scene again. They said no, they wanted to watch another episode. Um, probably because it was the performance was so powerful that they, they couldn't emotionally cope with witnessing it again. Anyway, aside from the one single line I contributed, I can report that the rest of the children's content is truly terrific. It's exactly what so many parents have been waiting for. And I'm not just saying that because I work here. I'm saying that because I'm a father of six and I'm one of those parents. We spent a couple of hours last night as a family going through the app and watching different shows. The kids loved all of it. I was personally very impressed. Beautiful animation, good stories, conservative values, all the things that most modern children's entertainment lacks. And when I say 
conservative values. I don't mean that the shows are political or that they hit you over the head with right-wing ideology, which is usually, again, historically, when conservatives get into entertainment, that's what it means. It means that, uh, listen, everyone, this is conservative. Here's the conservative lesson. Check it out, guys. Just battering you over the head with a sledgehammer. That's not the case here. I mean that they are stories centered around timeless truths and, and virtues, courage, patience, faithfulness, love of family, and so on. These are conservative values. They are the values that we're trying to conserve and that the modern entertainment industry has been waging a war against for many years. Now, this may seem like one long commercial for our kids' content, and I suppose it is, but nobody told me I had to talk about this, and I don't personally get paid when you subscribe to our children's platform. I'm talking about it because I truly believe in it. I think it's extremely important. The fact that children's entertainment is entirely captured by the left is a, it's a major problem. And nobody has made any serious effort to do anything about it until now. And I'm proud we're in that fight, one of many that we have picked as a company. You know, we take a lot of flack uh, here at The Daily Wire. We get it from the left, as you would expect. We're also attacked very frequently from the right. Everybody has a gripe, a complaint, a nit to pick. One minute we're far right, fascist, bigot, extremist. The next minute we're milk toast establishment, uh, leftist in disguise, depending on who you're listening to. Because people love to uh, sit up in the bleachers at a distance and criticize. Everyone has a criticism. But we're down here in the arena taking the risks, trying to actually make a difference. Don't always get it right. Make mistakes sometimes. Don't win every battle. Okay, with the kids' content, it's fantastic. It's amazing, I think. Um, is it success guaranteed? Not at all. People need to support it. If they don't, it could be a disastrous failure. It could take the whole company down, given the amount of financial investment we've put into it. But it's worth the risk. Because we're down here on the ground in the fight, which is the only place that I personally want to be. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.